Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And in this short video, I'm going to show you an animated crossed aldol condensation mechanism for the reaction of one equivalent of acetone with one equivalent of benzaldehyde. This is a very commonly used example of a crossed aldol condensation and one that's run in a lot of teaching labs. So let's take a look at it and see why it's so popular of an example for this type of reaction. Now, any cross aldol condensation is going to have a certain cast of characters, including two carbonyl compounds. In my example, I have a ketone and an aldehyde. And we're also going to need a catalyst, which here I'm going to use a base. So this is a base catalyzed cross aldol condensation. Specifically, my reagents are going to be acetone, benzaldehyde with its aromatic group shown here as a pH, and hydroxide as my base. Now let's get started with this reaction by looking first at one of those acetone hydrogens. The hydrogen of an acetone molecule has a pKa that's roughly 20. And that means it's weakly acidic and can potentially be removed in a proton transfer reaction. So let's think about what would happen if our hydroxide removed that proton. Well, in doing so, it would create a carbanion with lone pair of electrons and a dense negative charge. Pretty good nucleophile, isn't it? But it also, of course, produces the conjugate acid of hydroxide, water, whose pKa is 16. And anyone who takes my course should immediately raise their hand at this point and suggest maybe there's something wrong here, right? Because Henderson and Hasselbach wouldn't agree so much with this. I mean, I've traded an acid with a pKa of 20 for one of 16. So this is a pretty disfavored equilibrium. But we also know that disfavored equilibria don't necessarily disqualify a mechanism because, yeah, that's right, another familiar personality can join in here. Le Chatelier's principle is going to allow us to complete this mechanism in spite of this disfavored equilibrium kicking it off. That's because we tend to use very high concentrations of base and more favorable subsequent steps in the mechanism, both of which are going to allow this mechanism to continue. So let's go ahead and continue. In step two, that carbanion that we've created is pretty nucleophilic, so it's going to immediately look for a good electrophile. And that nucleophile is going to locate the electrophilic carbonyl of our benzaldehyde molecule. And of course, we all know what electrophiles and nucleophiles do. They create bonds with one another through nucleophilic attack. And as our attack occurs, notice there's no good leaving group, but there are pi electrons on the carbonyl of the aldehyde, which can retreat onto its oxygen, allowing the attack to take place and form a tetrahedral intermediate. Next, we're going to regenerate our catalyst. We're going to have our water molecule then transfer a proton back onto our newly created compound. In doing so, we regenerate our hydroxide catalyst, and we create what's known as a beta hydroxy ketone, so named because there are two bonds separating a hydroxy group and a ketone group. In the case of some aldol condensations, this is the end of the reaction, but for us, it's not. There's an additional step that can take place to produce a very stable compound and ensure that we get a very high quantitative yield from our reaction. In this extra step of the reaction, our hydroxide once again acts as a catalyst, setting off an E2 reaction this time. The product of this E2 reaction has a new double bond, and the double bonds in a very advantageous location. If you look closely, you'll notice that that double bond is tying the carbonyl of what was once our acetone molecule to the aromatic ring of the benzaldehyde. So the resonance contributors of this particular compound add up to a hybrid that looks something like this, with a high degree of conjugation through a very large region of the molecule. And as we all know, extended conjugation in organic compounds tends to lend them great stability, and this is no exception. So this benzylacetone molecule is extraordinarily stable and therefore tends to form quantitatively in this reaction with relative ease. There is one additional consideration, and that is, of course, that even benzyl acetone has more potentially reactive CH3s 
over here on the other side of what was originally our acetone molecule. So a second crossed aldol condensation is a possibility. Now I'll leave it to you to consider that mechanism and what product it would yield. And for now, I'm going to wrap this video up. But thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And as always, I'll see you on my next video.